welcome to the channel. Today, something a little bit different. Fixing the hinges on a laptop and also replacing the keyboard on the laptop. The keyboard right here. Okay, let's start with the hinges. This is what I think is the ultimate solution. Now, it's not gonna be for everybody. Some people aren't gonna like the aesthetics. But what I did is I took screws or actually bolts and took them right through from one side to the other. So I took off this bezel here and the best way to get the bezel off is to use uh, a prying tool. Now you can get those from places like iFixit. If you don't want to spend the money then what you can do is you can use like a credit card. What I used was an old Starbucks card that didn't have any money on it anymore. Got it into this edge down here and just kind of worked it loose. You've got to be careful or you will crack the bezel and this one is cracked but I didn't crack it. When the hinge broke, it cracked through here. So you take the bezel off, and then you'll be able to see the hinges, the top part of the hinges down here. On this particular laptop, there are four screws on each side. On my Toshiba, I think there were only three, and I hear on others there's only two. So four is good, that gives us a lot of surface area to attach it to. It's gonna make it more secure. I already had this fix-it kit right here. This is for laptops, and this is for when the screws, you know how screws are on the back side of a laptop. They seem to just work themselves out by, by themselves. One day you realize that a couple of the screws are missing and you don't know why. So that's why, why I purchased this. It just so happened that the longest machine screw that was in there, this little guy right here, I know it's going to be hard to see that, but that's the, the little screw that I got. And it's the one that I used to fix this laptop. Now, this kit doesn't come with any of the nuts that go on the other end of the bolt. So those I had to purchase. Also, I would highly recommend getting washers. I put washers on here because with the washer on the other side here, it gives it more surface area to attach to and to pull upon. If you were just relying on the head of the nut, which is a hex head and has some sharp edges, I don't think that that would be good. I would highly recommend using the, using the washers. There's a really up close look at it. Right there. Now the friend that I did this for, she didn't care about this. One thing she was concerned about, she said that she would be putting it in and out of one of those Targus bags. And I said, no problem. What I did is I took a Dremel and I kind of sanded down the little part of the, the bolt that popped through on the top side here. I wanted to make sure that it really gripped tight, so I wanted to make sure that the bolt went all the way through and there was plenty for it to grip to. I sanded it down with the Dremel, then I actually used a hand file to make sure it was nice and smooth. Then on top of that, I took super glue and I put just one little drop on the top of each one. And it kind of created a little plastic coating. They really feel smooth now and she's had no problems. So I think this is a really good solution. Also, if you wanted to make it more aesthetically pleasing, you might be able to find some black nuts and some black washers, and then it would have really fit in with the color scheme on this particular laptop. I think that's pretty much it, but now I'm gonna tell you kind of in detail how I did it. Once I took the bezel off, this side was the side that was broken, and there were a lot of little pieces of plastic in there from where the mount had broken. I got most of those out and I used a vacuum cleaner. Most people will tell you don't use a vacuum cleaner. There's a risk that you suck up something important. But I did use a vacuum cleaner. I disconnected the, the bolts that were already in there. There were some little tiny little bolts, not as long as this one that were going into the plastic. And the plastic was still attached on one side of a couple of them. And so I had to unscrew it and get it off and then I just threw that part away. For me, I was very lucky. On this side, there was still enough of the structure that the bracket would sit flush 
with the inside of the screen. And so I didn't have to build it up in any way. And if you did, you could use a little bit of super glue and some, some baking soda or baking powder, or you could also use some JB Weld. But I didn't have to do that, so I was very lucky. Then I lined it up the best I could. I took a drill and going very slowly, I went from one side right through the case. Now, that will make your heart seize up on you because you're going right through the case and you wanna make sure you're in the right place because you can't make mistakes on this. You really need to get it right the first time. So measure as many times as you need to, have somebody hold it with you while you drill through. I did it by myself and it, it really wasn't too bad. Once I got one hole created, I went ahead and put a bolt through it, put a washer on, and I tightened it down. Now when you're tightening it down, I highly recommend that you don't use a tool. Uh, the only thing I used was a very small socket that I put on it, and then I twisted it with my fingers. Okay. The last thing you want to do is hear a crack, because if you hear a crack, you've probably damaged the plastic shell, and it's not going to hold as, as tightly as it would. Okay. So be very careful when you're doing that. After I had one attached, I just did one at a time, making sure I secured them. On the other side, the bracket was fine. It was still working, but I inspected it and I could tell that there was some micro fractures. So what I did is I advised my friend, I said, there's some micro fractures. Do you want me to leave it as it is or do you want me to, to do the same thing that I had done on the other side? And she said, well, what do you think? I said, well, if you really want a, a solution that's gonna last and I'm already here, let me go ahead and do the same solution on this side. And she said, fine. This side went even faster because I already had the bracket attached. I took out one screw at a time, drilled through the hole where the uh, bracket was, fed through the nut, fed through the bolt, sorry, put the nut and the washer on the other end, tightened it down loosely by hand, and did all three of the other ones so that I had all four done. Then I used a little socket, put it on the outside, made sure not to over tighten it, and then I did the filing and the super glue. And another thing about the super glue, I was hoping, I, I can't say for sure, but I was hoping that some of the super glue would kind of uh, weep into the thread a little bit. And so hold the, these nuts on a little bit tighter. I did this circa November or December of 2019, and it's still going strong. So I think this is a really good fix. I think the super glue and the baking powder option, I think that's a good option if you can get it to adhere really well to the inside of the shell. But some of these thermoplastics, super glue doesn't always stick very well to them. Anyway, let's move on to the keyboard. Okay, let's talk about the keyboard. This is the keyboard that I replaced. This is the old keyboard. And here's the, here's the new one. I turned, turned it on. And of course it's RGB. And it's, it's cycling through the colors as you can see. <clears throat> one, one thing that my friend said is that this keyboard feels a lot better than the original. And this is the original. The reason why we replaced the real, original is some of the keys weren't working. As you can see, some of them, one of them is missing. Some of them, the letters have faded off. The space bar, when you press the space bar, you had to kind of hit it in an angle. And that was true with some of the other keys, like the A. It's usually the vowels, because you're constantly hitting vowels. The A key, the E key, they just weren't working very well. So it's got two cables on it. One for key, con key control, and then one for the RGB. At least I'm thinking that's probably correct. So let me tell you what I had to do in order to do this. You have to disassemble the laptop, and you essentially have to pull almost everything out of it. It's absolutely not for the faint of heart. It took me five hours to do. I would say it took me about three and a half hours to tear it down and about an hour to put it back together again. And then probably about 30 minutes testing just to make sure everything was working. 
So basically four and a half hours for the tear down and the reassembly. Okay, now I really took my time. The other thing I did was I took my iPhone and when I flipped it over, the first thing you need to do is take off the back. Once you take off the back, then you should go ahead and disconnect the battery. I was using a small set of jeweler screwdrivers to take out some of the screws and a jeweler screwdriver, a lot of them are just 100% metal and you don't, want, you don't want to drop that on the PCB and have it short something out. So very important, disconnect the battery and usually it's just a little connector, a little tiny connector and you can just kind of wiggle it and pull it off. Once I'd done that, then I took some high res pictures with my iPhone. I took six, just like six sections like this. Then as I was going through the machine and taking out the circuit boards and disconnecting wires, before I disconnect a connector, I would take a really up close picture of it to make sure that the orientation was right when I put it back together. Most of the connectors will only go in one way. So taking pictures isn't always necessary but it's good insurance. So let me tell you some of the major issues. Okay, You have to take out almost everything. And for me on this MSI laptop, it's an MSI laptop, I had to remove the heat pipe with the big metal block on the back of the CPU. Now one thing they showed me was there was almost no thermal paste on it. This laptop would run hot. My friend would tell me that the, the fans would constantly run and she had actually asked me, can you do anything about that? It's annoying, they constantly run. And I was looking at the temperature and I said, you know, we can go into the software and maybe we can set a new curve on it. But it would still run a lot. Now it runs a lot cooler because I put the perfect amount of thermal paste on it when I reassembled it. So you are going to have to take that, that whole assembly off. It wasn't particularly hard, but you need to take care when you're removing any of these components. If you've ever put together a desktop computer, and I build most of my desktop computers, dealing with a laptop is a little bit different, but the, but the components are kind of the same. They're just really small. So it wasn't too hard. The other issue that I had was taking out the wireless. I had to disconnect the wireless module, and usually the wireless module is a little rectangular piece about yay big and it has usually a couple of wires coming out of it, one or two, it's usually two wires. And the way that that works is it clips into the board on what looks like a press stud. It's kind of like if you've ever had a ski jacket or button fly jeans that use those press studs, those big me those metal studs where you push them together, it essentially uses that. But they're really small, they're really small buttons. And when I was reassembling it, pushing down on it, it just wouldn't connect, probably because my finger pad was just giving way too much. I tried using my fingernail, still couldn't get it to work. Ultimately, I found getting a toothpick, just cutting off the end a little bit with the pair of scissors and getting it lined up and then just pushing it with the toothpick. That worked. So that's what I would recommend. <clears throat> As I was taking everything out, also I have these, have these little party cups and I have more of them up there. And I would put the screws in and I would label them from which board I took them off. Just so that I could get everything back in the same hole and so I don't have any parts left over. You know, I always say any home project is not complete without two trips to the Home Depot and one trip to the emergency room. Luckily, I did not cut my hands on this at all and I only needed to go to uh, Orchard Supply since it was a little bit closer to get the uh, nuts and the washers to fix the hinge. Okay, so once you get everything out, you essentially are digging through the entire laptop to get to this board on the other side. And there's several different ways that they can have it, have it mounted in there. Sometimes they have some little metal things that are just turned over. Other times it's screws that are screwed into the plastic and have a little tab that stick out and just hold it in like this. It was pretty easy to get out and there's two ribbon connectors <coughs> that you see right here. I really hate these friction, friction connectors because I've never had a lot of luck with them. 
And there were several in this. There were like two or three other ones, but I didn't have any trouble getting them out and getting them back in again. So I guess I got lucky. One thing you want to do is when you put the keyboard in after you've taken the old one out, you want to put some of the tabs back on and some of the screws. And then you want to open it up and make sure that the keyboard is through the, the little matrix of kind of windows that are there to, through that frame to make sure that none of the keys are binding on any of that frame edge. And I didn't have any trouble with that. It just seemed to slot in really nicely. The, the connectors worked perfectly. The keyboard that I used to replace this one, I'll put it up on the screen. When I purchased it, I think it was about $25. I'll double check that and put it up on the screen. Uh, now you can see it's, it's, it's under 20. And so that's a really good deal. Now, one thing I did consider was to buy the replacement keyboard and just cannibalize it and use the parts from it and fix the keyboard. But I wasn't 100% sure that it would be the same mechanism and I didn't want to start pulling keys off of it. I just thought, let me just put the whole thing in. It seemed like it was a better feeling keyboard from the start. And everything my, my friend tells me is, that it is a much better keyboard. So then I started putting all the components back in. Just take your time and refer to any pictures you need to on your on your cell phone. And if you get if you get lost, once again, you need a large block of time. So if you have a significant other, you want to have them stay away. You don't want to be interrupted while you're doing this. It's it's pretty intense. I wouldn't want to do this for a living. Absolutely not. Once I had everything in, I had one screw left over, and it took me about 15 minutes to find out where it went. And it actually went under one of the ribbon connectors that I'd plugged back in. I'd plugged it back in, and it was, it was hiding that hole. I got that back in. I felt so relieved that I had all the screws back in. I put the back on. I flipped it over, and I hit the power button. And guess what? it did not turn on. I did reconnect the battery, so, so that wasn't the problem. Now I do remember that when I replaced the internal battery on a Toshiba computer that I used to own, in fact the same one that I'd done the, the glue fix on the hinge when that hinge broke, uh, there was a, a restart procedure. I think you needed to hold down the power button for like 30 seconds or something and, and then try to turn it on. I looked online and I didn't find anything immediately. So what I did is I plugged the charger in and I don't know if that kicked it in the butt or something, but uh, I, then I held down the power button for like 30 seconds and it turned on. And it worked ever since then and it's not been a problem. I also checked that I could access the internet, that I reconnected the uh, wireless module correctly. And that was it. Everything went pretty well. Time to do a summary. Not everyone is gonna like this. The glue option is going to avoid this. You're not gonna have these bolts sticking through with these nuts on the end. Like I said, if you were to get black bolts, uh, and I am using black bolts, but if you were to get black nuts and black washers, if you could find them, I suppose you could spray paint them if you wanted to. A little black spray paint would probably work. It might chip off after a while, but if you could just find ones that are already black, that would probably be, that would probably be better. And it, it would make it look a little better. She doesn't mind that, that it's like this. And um, it does feel really secure. You absolutely want to loosen up those hinges when you're in. And you can see that it will fall down now when it's, when it's pretty low. I loosened them probably a little bit too much but I didn't want this to happen again. So <clears throat> another thing, here. this is my personal laptop. This is also another MSI. And I just wanted to talk about this one for a moment. The bezel on this, and you can see on this one, you have to be careful lifting it up because the hinges are way too tight. I really don't want to go in and take the bezel off when it doesn't when I'm not repairing anything else. But if you look at the bezel here, it's really thin. 
I'm hoping that if you're trying to fix a laptop that's a little newer and has a very thin bezel like this, I have a feeling the hinges are going to be actually down here on this wider bezel portion and not up here. I don't think they're going to be on this edge here because I don't think there would be enough space for the, for the screen and the hinge to sit there. My guess is the hinges are, are right here. So hopefully I'm right about that and this will, will still help you. Anyway, that's it for this episode. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I know some people might consider the ultimate hinge fix a little bit of clickbait and it's not my tent, intent at all. I truly am very happy with this. My glue fix only worked for about nine months and it was fine for nine months. And the computer was getting a little long in the tooth at that point anyway. It was kind of old and the CPU was kind of underpowered at that point. This is still a good laptop, even four years after fixing it here. And I think it's probably about six years old now, something like that. So anyway, take care and I'll see you in another episode soon.